absolute longest stand has ever been quiet. Yes, I'm pretty sure it has. That was really kind of tough. Phil didn't want us to talk, and so we were just going to do the whole show just not talking. And I'm going to see how long Sam can last. We doubt that it'll last long. That's all we're going to say. How was your weekend? She really wants to say it was terrible. She had no fun at all. That she didn't see any kind of, well, actually, I don't know if she did see any actual animals. And it was a very short, non-eventful trip home and there. Um, <laughs> I don't know how she's going to stay quiet. But I can't do it anymore. Was like, okay, <laughs> thank you. My weekend was cold. Cold. Really? It's cold, cold. here. How it cold was, was it? Uh, it was when I was getting into the stand, like I think high 20s, low 30s, with like 20, 25 ish mile per hour winds, I think. See, that's good stuff for next month for our deer season. It was real. But I guess you weren't quite ready for that. It was real cold. Well, so originally when I left, I made a point to like not so, buy. So wait, hold on. Pause. Rewind a little bit. I went to South Dakota to go. There we go. Photograph some deer hunting. Um, so uh, originally it was supposed to be like in the 60s or 70s. So I had like base layers, some outer layers, you know, nothing super super hot though, because I hadn't ordered anything. So I was like, I don't need it for another month. Well, then South Dakota did this cute thing where uh, two days before we left, it was like 18 and snowing. So I was real cold. I stole my dad's car heart bibs. Uh, and I mean, I, I wore like three pair of pants, bibs, like six upper layers, an outer coat. I had like hoods, beanies, headbands, gloves, and this hot is hands. 20s to 30s. Yes. That wind was brutal. Also, I'm terrified of heights, so getting me in a deer stand is scary enough. Uh, getting me in the deer stand with that many pairs of pants when I can't actually move any of my joints. And you said you didn't even cry this time. I didn't time, even so cry. So we're proud of you. I'm, I'm legit terrified heights. But it was... Like, it's not that. I saw a lot of deer. Necessary. Didn't shoot any deer. They dropped a buck yesterday after I left for my 11-hour drive home alone. And didn't shoot at a deer, but you saw a deer. I saw deer so close to my we were camera. Using short range guns? We were using bows. Oh, yes. So Which we, are kind of like short range guns. I mean, yeah, I mean, kind of. They just don't go bang, mean, they just twang. They go thwack um, on impact. But I had deer set close to the stand, like does, because they're smart, that knew I was there but couldn't figure it out. So they were within like eight yards of me and just like stomping at me. And I was just like, I can't take your picture because you're so close, my lens literally can't focus on you. As soon as you jump down, you give them big hugs. Yeah. No, mm -mm. there was like a whole heart of them. I started naming them. Um, they yeah. are stupid yeah. smart. Yeah, yeah. They, they yeah. were like on the trail, like I walked in and like, it was, it was a haul of a walk, like because it's South Dakota. So you well, said this is also very lightly hunted. And most people that hunt it, it's for bird. It, okay. They, it's, Everybody up there is all about pheasants. It's the pheasant capital of the world, apparently, which I learned in a Mexican restaurant over the weekend. It was a terrible Mexican restaurant. Argentina? No, that's doves. Or Argentina's something. doves. Yeah. Yeah. You go hunt doves and red stag. Uh, <laughs> I'm down with that. I'm down with everything but the price tag. Snacks and food. Yeah, but it walking, you can either go like down super steep hill and a ravine to go back up, or you have to walk all the way around. I can let you know that when wearing seven pairs of pants, I was not walking up anything and down anything. But if you're walking, can't you like take off some of the pants, put them in the pack, no, no, no. do the walking, and then stop? While wearing that much clothing, while walking, I was comfortably warm. Yes. Whoa. Yes, I do not do the cold. It doesn't sound like you do the cold very well. I don't. That is, that is for sure. I, I don't. So I would just get to a point where oh, I was so cold. Not that cold. Like, I would just like, just like freeze up and just. So, heads up, don't ever go to Saskatchewan or any of the other But I want territories to because, because geese. that is way, way below 30 degrees cold. I really. So That's I, like 30 below. I'm a cold, cold person. I think the problem was like I, my body hasn't like adjusted because I left here where it was like 
90 last week or something. For stupid. most of the week, there was a couple and of And then all of a sudden, it was like 20 though, something then, with a breeze yeah. sitting in the dark. And I was like, <laughs> Yeah, I made that mistake last year. So usually, you're, but like Missouri's nice and like works her way into it. I mean, sure, she'll randomly drop like 60 and then like Have you been the to 20. Missouri? Yeah, but for the most part, you gradually work your way into it to hunting season. So usually by the time it's like 18 degrees and windy, I'm like, I've been cold for a month now. I'm used to it. Last week, I was still wearing short sleeves. Okay. Yeah. Needless to say, I killed nothing. I almost died via pheasant. And uh, that's all I got. Well, isn't that kind of scary, scary sad? And Phil probably really enjoyed not hearing my voice for four whole days. I'm sure he was really upset. He's not grinning over there behind the scenes at all, laughing his day. He actually got five days the way his days land off. He didn't have to see me Friday either. He got five whole days without me. I and mean, now I haven't look left. Look at him. You were here he in the was. morning, but you he left was. because your wife was going to kill you. Yes. Which I'm guessing she didn't. He's here. So. And I'm guessing your family didn't during the birthday party on Saturday because you are also still here. They tried. That would be smart, but I also feel like your wife would kill you. Hmm. Hmm. But, yeah, how was your weekend? Oh, uh, it was not nearly as cold as yours. No, but man, you got to go chilly. cool stuff, didn't I you? I did. I got to go do some tattoo gun shooting over at Sparta, and then we stuck around in a night Say match. it was your night match, wasn't it? Yes. Did you shoot those uh, fancy bullets? Phil I gotcha? did. I did. So we've talked about streak in the past, streak ammo in the past. There's some people that are now back to working, and so hopefully, fingers crossed, there'll be some new excitement that we might be able to talk about. But yeah, so I got uh, a hold of some of that streak ammo and went over and did a couple of stages with that. Um, when it's low light out at Sparta and there's no moon, you're literally working with just starlight. You guys had um, no moon here? Was it cloudy? Very little moon. Well, actually, no, we did have moon for a while. See, I was going to say, yeah. I, like, I didn't use a headlamp until my walk out on Monday night because it was a full. It was That's a, right. Yeah. It was a so full we had, harvest we had moon. And it was so bright up there. To see, but the way that the moon comes in, there's yeah. big shadows that cover basically the entire shooting bay portion, and cameras don't work in that low a light. Um, Not generally. Very good. So they generally get a little angry. Tried to get some footage of it. It was neat to watch because you get all these little like laser beams coming laser out. Laser beams. I get excited and was just all the trigger happy pulling because I could see these little red laser beams. So when my flashlight wasn't working, but I knew the general area of where the target was supposed to be and I could see kind of the target and like the light, I would just shoot and then just aim the laser beams. So it was really like tracer ammo. That's really it's cool. just not nearly as accurate to use it as tracer fire with a pistol that's semi-automatic because you pull the trigger and it's like one laser and you're like, now, did I move my hand since that last one? Mm. Needless to say, my night match did not score so very well. Yeah, I saw some did pictures a of you. better during the daytime. I saw some pictures of you and your, your little plate carrier and whatnot. It's a lot of gear. I saw some pictures of you on the Insta tubes. On the tubes. It was, it was the tubes. I saw that it looked like so. Graham graced you with his presence. Yes, I got to shoot with Graham and Matt and a bunch of other peoples. And Ooh, Maddie did a night match. He did. He did first time shooting a night match. He was Maddie, a Maddie's goal. getting serious into those matches. He is. He is. He's been shooting matches about a year and really kind of taken him and really he's he's got all the toys now. And every day he's like sending me messages. Hey, what about this? Hey, what he about this? He owes me a turkey hey, feather. This? Ooh, I don't know if he'll be back Thursday or next Thursday. I'm not sure. But anyway, so that was fun. Um, it was a lot, of, a lot of fun that way. And then kids were doing wild things all weekend. Kids were doing kid things? Yeah, they are bouncing all over the place. And Had to feed them? Yeah. That so. a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. They want to eat like multiple times a day. Weird. Like every day. It's like 2 o'clock and we haven't even had lunch yet. Yeah, I mean that happens to us a lot. We might get it later. Probably Maybe not. Maybe my dinner will be the lunch and the breakfast. I'm going to eat the fudge that's sitting on your desk. Mm. Oh. 
I told you you should have grabbed some of that earlier. I was really good. Tell your yeah. wife she can yes. send more to work. Chris's she, wife is practicing her fudge making skills. She started earlier. It's year. good. Yeah, she tried a new it espresso, espresso thing and white chocolate and yeah, she does good um, when she follows the recipe. She had one time where she forgot to add salt. So when you don't add salt to the fudge, you just end up with a whole batch of it never hardens, but is way too sweet to be frosting, kind of a frosting thing. Is that like when you forget to add, what is it, corn syrup you make like taffy with or whatever? When they make candies with your grandma? Don't do that. Yeah, you gotta look at- Phil's, look, Phil's see, my face wife, like, I wouldn't trust her with corn syrup. My wife is a good cook in that like when we first get, uh, met, when I first met her, she could boil water in order to make mac and cheese. That was that was her. I'm extent. assuming instant mac and cheese. Yeah, it was just mac and cheese, craft. That was the extent of what she could she could cook. And then <coughs> she figured out that hamburger helper was kind of like the same thing, except it was totally confusing. That whole browning the meat, she couldn't understand how to brown the meat. Yeah, it took. A, a few tries to actually get her to understand that you just take meat that's pink and make it brown, and that is the browning of the meat. Yeah. Well, so, I'm convinced she has to be a very sweet, nice lady because she is married to you. I'm confused. I got lucky. She, this and, is the and same. Caught her when she was this, like she was clueless. She's so at the same great. level of Vinny. Vinny doesn't add milk or butter when he makes craft mac and cheese, though. Yeah, no, you go ahead. She did you go that. ahead and do the math she, on that she one. She did. She she was like she could. Okay, like sometimes she had the mac and cheese on point. A lot of times it was a little too sticky, a little too watery. Like we had a big run there, but that was a long time ago. And now she's at to a point where she's never really done like. Okay, here's my in ingredients. Here's my instructions. Like I'm gonna follow this recipe. Here it is right here. She's more like. Well, that's a neat recipe. Now, let's see. And she'll just grab other stuff. So she kind of makes her own variances on stuff. And Your wife is a constant potluck. Yes, and she's got a couple of recipes that are kind of lined out or she's semi-repeatable. Um, and those are awesome. Like She does the well, absolutely she can, she can most keep fantastic. The Meatloaf possible. I don't think she uses the fudge recipe either. I think she's she can keep the fudge recipe. Kind of got that figured out. Um, so she's just more of the eclectic. We we'll just try these. She's things. just winging it. Yeah. I'm cool. So. I mean, she obviously she's doing okay as both your kids are still alive and haven't starved to death. Yeah, and they keep growing. Um, yes. So they're getting awfully big, way big, but. So yeah, it's good stuff. So well, the fudge, she's you know she's had some issues with you it. You can tell we're hungry because we've stuff. really stuck on this food subject for a hot minute. Yeah, you had some amazing food last week. And by amazing, I mean it was interesting to hear. Mm. Tell us about porcupine. Get away from me. You tried porcupine. Get away I'm from me. I'm intrigued by this porcupine no. thing. I also I, ate hot sauce, and if anybody knows me knows I hate hot sauce. I hate hot sauce more than I hate bananas, and I hate bananas a whole lot. I hate hot sauce. I like spicy food, but the smell of hot sauce is awful. And there was a point in my week last week where I specifically asked for hot sauce. And in my book, that might be an all-time low. I mean... Because I hate hot sauce. It, hot sauce normally tames everything. It was bad. Well, what was it kind of like? So anyway, customer appreciation Saturday. Oh, well, okay. We're not gonna go down this list Chris yep. made me. Because yep. I've been yep. gone for five days, so I forgot. Exactly, everything. I only have all kinds of fun. Customer so we have appreciation. Customer appreciation day on Saturday. I just lined out the deets. We're getting PM barbecue for lunch. PM barbecue, they won't let us cook. Yeah, we're following um, the rules this year, and since yep. we don't have a food license, we're gonna actually have real food. So yeah. PM barbecue will PM be here. PM barbecue will be here, so we'll have all that good stuff. Which that we all know awesome. Chris and I love as we frequent It's a good find. Very they good no find longer, on John's side. They no longer ask who it is when I call. Uh, the lady just knows my name. Yeah. Hey, Sam. And then you yeah. go in there, and she's like, oh, you guys are so nice. And so it's like, you guys hey, always Sam send us from the range. And... Are you ordering for an event, or do you guys need lunch today? It's like, how many things of nachos do you actually need? I need one. That stuff's great. Maybe that's what we're... Anyway. Anyway, obviously we didn't foods. have lunch. So customer um, appreciation. So we got food coming, barbecue. We have free lanes all day. Free sim free all day. Free sim all day. 
We have 10% off all guns, 15% off optics when you buy a gun, 10% if you just buy the optic. Um, <coughs> what else? We got bulk ammo bulk on ammo all pricing. calibers, on all volumes. We basically have 10% off the store or more. Come in Saturday to find out and just take Phil home with you. He's put on all right. the stuff on the counter and say what's the best deal you'll give me, and yes. then we'll figure it out. Do that. How's I'll that? do the math because Chris and I will both be here Saturday. Yeah. And then we have food big drive. thing is the food drive. So the Which is Jefferson not just a food Barracks drive, but I don't know how else military to say it. veteran food pantry drive of wanting to fill their shelves even more. So I did see that recently there's been a bunch of people that have been donating straight to them, and so. They are up, but it is not up enough. We want to do oh, now even I can see more, the comments. even more, even more. Um, so any kind of food item that you bring in, any kind of, uh, you know, it has to be non-perishable. So canned goods, dried goods, any of that stuff. I made a um, whole list. Actually, I think they can even use, do box, I don't know. Check the list that Sam put together. Meats, it's all canned in there. Canned fruits, canned vegetables, instant potatoes, instant rice, instant noodles. Um, Just variety to make sure if it has an expiration date, like you give them some time. Yeah. Remember, this has got to go to the shelf. Then people got to go. They're only open two days a month. One for veterans, one for active duty. So. Shower stuff. Yeah. Any household hygiene goods. Hygiene stuff. Goods. Household stuff. I went and bought out all the toothbrushes at Dollar General. I'm not sorry. So we were going to try and do a fun thing where we, I was going to like, hey, Phil, let's do the like wandering, which we figured out we might be able to do. But then we came in and the thing had to do a bunch of updates. What if I just started but, piling boxes um, up in here? Watch. Why? I want it out there. Just it's out there. What's a, uh, we'll well, have we can't a, wander a, a out thing. there. Yeah, I mean. What are you gonna just, do? Just, I, I we're gonna do? We're gonna go it. bring all the tables in. Anyway, all the tables. I think we have a post that either went up today or is going up today. I did it this morning, but I don't know. nonetheless, we got some tables. Got a lot of stuff. Thank Need you guys for that. Um, we also found out that we can do cash donations as well. Mm -hmm. So if you'd rather do cash, um, any item that you bring in, any dollar that you donate is going to get you a ticket. Yep. The ticket's going to be to win a KSG. Mm -hmm. um, Shotgun, Shotgun. It, it's it's nuts. Um, or a SIG MCX, MCX. chambered in 556. Five, so totally awesome guns, both of them. Um, we actually had a guy that was trying to buy the KSG today, or no, the MCX, one of them. Anyway, Ron had to chase him off. It was kind of interesting. <laughs> so, um, uh, but bring stuff in, bring win stuff. stuff. In, yeah. um, and John show up Saturday. Has and the offered. donations you can donate all the way through the end of the month. Um, she will be here, Janice, Janet, Janet will be here, I hope, think next week um, to do the live show. So we'll have her on and she can give her side of how it started, what it does, and all that good stuff. So, But you can only win stuff on Saturday. Through this Saturday, yes. So while we appreciate your donations, if you want free tickets for your donations, you got to do it before Saturday. Yeah. Or by Saturday, I should say, not before Saturday. Yeah. And we'll do it at... Um, John also offered Saturday if you want to bring so. in cash because... You won't get your bang for your buck at the Walmarts. John has a Costco and a Sam's Club card, and he will take your money and go there buy go. things in bulk. So that offer is on the table. I had that discussion with John. Yeah. Look at that. Matt Smith wants to know when the Hellcatcher is first showing up. We don't know. Good question. Ask Dustin. Um, Let me get my Springfield rep. Dustin oh, said he would be, they would be shipping soon. Not sure on the Hellcats. Um, we do have pre-orders right now. It's like 540 for the standard cut, 570 for the optic cut. Um, Hundred dollars down gets you stuck in line. You just tell us which one you want. Yep. We've got a bunch of them on order already. As the volume of pre-orders goes up, so do our order volumes on our end as well. So we are literally just waiting for vendors to start. I do shipping. know we have one non-optic ready version coming. Um, when? It, it might be here today. But they were calling, all the pre-orders were for optics ready guns. Okay. We had like 15 pre-orders or something. They were all for optics cut. They were going to call all those people and find out if any of them wanted to change the non-optic. So it might be the case, is, it might not. 
Uh, this is in for that, interesting that, information. It's silly, but nonetheless. Well, just to give them the opportunity if they want to take that one instead since it's released, because we don't know when the optic come out. They could be. I did really, they could I be, did really so like So they might be shipping soon. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. So, unless one of you guys wants one of the non optic ones, give us a call or stop in, put your $100 down on that one, because Phil says that we may have an, a non optic cut one. 636 that comes in first. 220 1300. Yeah. 636-220-1300. Give us a call. Um, you sound like a radio commercial. Use it as an email, but... Call. It would be easier to call, because then call. we can instantly... Do, do, do. If you call, if we do we're this most likely emailing pick up, make game sure back and forth, and then confusion on how to get a hold of who. And Hi, Andy and Miller. Stuff. Hey, buddy. Man, he's off playing. He went to Vegas. Yeah, he's off playing in Vegas. And he's like wandering around, seeing all the other stuff. You know what? That's okay. That's whatever Andy Miller wants. He's a nice guy. He brought me a pumpkin. He gets what he deserves. Yeah. I, if you ever need to hook up on a car, Andy Miller's would do. Shameless plug right there. Nicest guy you'll ever meet. He's what, Hyundai's? Hyundai's yeah, he's Dean Team. All the rest of it? Hyundai yeah. Dean Team? Yeah, Dustin went through him. I think John's going through him. He saved a couple of us on like flat tires, oil changes. He's got the hookup. 10 out of 10 recommend. Yeah. Anywho, Phil's favorite subject training. What kind of Matt, classes totally we got? Totally come in and shoot one on your birthday. Absolutely. Um, when is your birthday? When's your birthday? I don't know. Depending on how soon your birthday is, we may not have one, but <laughs> we might have one by the time your birthday is. You never know. Either way. Talk um, about training. It'll make Phil happy, and he's making his grumpy face at us. Yes. So training. We've got defensive handgun coming up. We've got CCW um, Monday, Saturday. We've got basic carbine, basic pistol next week. Um, constantly have new classes going up. So Phil's Sometimes always adding Phil new even stuff. Teaches. We've got at least three or four of them every week. Um, so figure out Remember what kind that. of class you want to jump into. Jump on that. If you don't see a class that specifically hits your needs, we got private lessons. We'll literally go over whatever you want. I, when I'm doing the thing with the thing and I can't do the thing and if I do that, then the thing doesn't work. Um, we hear a lot of people when you ask them, we ask So I shouldn't people, hold it like this? No. No, I did watch the Silencer Co. guy shoot a Glock with his thumb literally over the back of it, which was pretty awesome. Like this? Yeah. That sounds like it's going to go snap. You didn't do anything. You don't do nothing. It goes bang once. Yeah, because he had a, actually had a threaded barrel on there, and he had a suppressor on the front end of it, and the can with it weighted. That makes sense. It literally doesn't have any back pressure to keep I it I wasn't back, thinking so, with a can um, on it. But even without a But can, even without, yeah. yeah, if you just put your thumb and really? hold it in battery. I'll show it to students sometimes when I ask about it. Okay, but Phil says this is bad, guys. That's bad. That's how you. Yeah, if you let it you start moving, stitches. it's gonna rip off parts Chunks of, of your body. The, the body, and it hurts badly. I've I watched that happen. It's kind of funny. Have not done it. Yet. I'm not gonna say yeah, no. I won't ever do it. I'm yeah. just saying, in this to, instant, I have not received stitches for said reasoning. Matt, we may have the Hellcats by November 5th. Paul. Uh, it's possible. We'll uh, see. It sounds like we may have one coming up shortly, very soon. So they're super um, nice. To shoot. Anybody that hasn't shot one of those things, reach out. We'll figure out when Dustin is going to be here. Which where is he? He was gone yesterday too. It's Wednesday. Don't He's like off. It. Yeah, no, but he was gone yesterday. He's a slacker. Like poke him. See, so, yeah, I think yesterday was Danielle's birthday. Oh yeah. Well. So now that Phil says that, because like, which one? Your boys are really close to hers. I don't know. My boys Is she on like a Sunday? winter break or something? Because like, isn't she at school during the day? Okay, listen. Like, just sometimes when your parents really like you, they take you out of school for your birthday. Well, sometimes when your kid has birthdays, you're across the country. So and that wasn't a direct dig at you, but we'll. It's uh, one of them things. Anyway, speaking of that, I'm kind of looking forward to it. We all. We so all just registered for media day at Shot Show. Signed up. Woo! We Can will I get to see you, Mike, because I know you're watching. I know he's watching. I wanted we're gonna, we are going to come check you out. We'll see. I wanted things. to stop yesterday and see him on my way through because I had to like drive through Boonville and like going through that section of like Boonville, Columbia. All I can think is like I need to stop and see Mike. But I was coming through there at like six o'clock and I figured he was already off work and I was like, Dude, no, Mike I'll just keep lives. driving. So I talked to Mike. I called him. He was at the shop. I talked to him for not even like five minutes on the phone and he starts talking about blah, blah, blah. And I was like, 
are you at home yet? He's like, yeah. <laughs> he, he was like two minutes from like minutes where he from works. Work. Like he's like, I go from office to lawn mowing in five minutes flat. And well, that's including changing clothes and shoes. That's impressive. Dude. I, I, was, I thought about stopping. My original I had planned on leaving earlier in the morning and it didn't work out that way. <coughs> so I was like, I'll just, I mean, I guess I'll see him in Vegas. Because <laughs> in reality, I'm not going to see him between now and then. We just need to make the trip out there. We do. It's, it's just... It's just I mean, after funny. making an 11-hour commute, that two-hour drive one way to him seems like nothing. Right. So it's just drop in a bucket. <laughs> just wasn't even that bad. So speaking of Dustin, good luck to Dustin next week. He's shooting He'll next week, right? PCC Nationals and IDPA Nationals. He'll be all um, over the country. next week. Uh, it's all at the same place. Oh, for some reason I thought he had to go from one range to no, another range. No, I think it's like IDPA, PCC, I don't know. I think it's all in the same area. He's just bouncing from one to the other. Missouri um, Tactical Officers Association. I should have came and took pictures for you. I had my camera riding passenger. Yeah, there you go. Um, and congrats to Contrell. Won another first Contrell place. Contrell won another first place, gets the match bump. So he's bumped up That's to expert my dude. class in IDPA. So. He has been putting in some serious work in the past six months. Yeah, he has. He's been putting in a lot of work over the years. I think um, we've just seen really a lot of seen progress lot in the past the, six months. Yeah. Uh, and, and we've seen that a lot with a lot of the range, the guys that are shooting here, Him, shooting our Grant, matches and so forth. Jason so, Brown. Right. We have, what, three or four of them that in the past four matches have all been bumped up to expert. Mm -hmm. So, um, Says something to our matches on Thursdays may yeah. actually be helping people out. That's awesome. All kinds it makes of me happy. Twisty, turny, move your shakers, and the Basically, tougher we make Chris, the weekly, the monthly matches, the better that you're Chris able to be Chris likes to ready torture everybody, and it pays off in the long run. Well, it's not torturing necessarily. It's it's torture to the new people, um, but at the same time, for the new people, it's the first time that you're dealing with that stuff. So to deal with it in a, ma yeah. in a small match is one thing where you can be like. Versus having... Well, at least I'm not going to feel dumb in front of a lot of people. It's just the 25 that are shooting with yeah. me. Um, yeah. As opposed to going things. to a national match and you're like, every stage has them. Oh it's like God. that meme I sent you guys yesterday. <laughs> Shooter ready. Stand by. Beep. I have forgotten everything. Oh, yeah. T-Max <laughs> T -Max says, it, says it best. Uh, in a nutshell, he says, when the you can have a perfect plan laid out. When the buzzer comes out, when the buzzer goes off, the poop comes out, and so does your plan. <laughs> your brain gone. is just gone. Entire brain dump in yourself going, oh, I'm shooting guns. That's right. <laughs> Draw and shoot targets. Uh, and IDPA is very start here, move to here, move, then move to here, then move to here. And they like to have you doing stuff. So like run over here and pick up a cat and run over there and put the cat down and pick up a ball and run over here. And, <laughs> Do Wait, all this weird you stuff. You forgot to like play tennis in there somewhere too. Uh, that's on a different stage. Oh my god. Um, yeah, this is, and you're like bouncing around from place to place. Uh, Arnold used to do a IDPA match, the the tier four, I think, a tier four match um, for backstoppers, which for some reason didn't run this year, but nonetheless. Um, and they always had like you're shooting out of a boat on one stage, you're shooting on a bicycle on another <laughs> stage, you're shooting wild animals come running at you. They got rhinoceroses moving across and all kinds of chaotic stuff. Sounds USPSA, they're like, okay, you're gonna start here, and we got a bunch of targets out there, and shoot them wherever, however you want to. So those just, are like you're trying to plan. Just go crazy. IDPA, it's more like just shoot until the, the gun locks back. That means you're out of ammo. Put a new one Repeat. in, and they keep going. I'll just I'll yeah. stick to shotgun things. Yeah, they're much more accurate. That's why I'm not very good at IDP. It's the shotgun. accuracy thing. The f going fast, I can do. It's the going fast accurately that I'm. I'll stick to shotguns because it goes like this: pull, poof. I have seen plenty of shotgun shooters that come over and like watch some of the pistol stuff, and then they're like. Well, you guys are like smiling and laughing and having a good time. Is that okay? I, I will say that depending on the crew you shoot with, it'll depend on how fun it is with any shotgun sport. Because some of them are the very like traditional, like we're not happy, we don't smile. Right. Like, but you get it some guys and you're like, why are you doing a handstand on the golf cart? Would you quit that? And y'all put in like shotguns, you put them right on your feet. Yeah, we do. Like. Got little magnets for it. Yeah, they, they like literally make magnets for you to put your gun on your foot. Yeah, 
It's broke open. Um, what happens when it's not? It then doesn't go on your foot. Okay, that's like, <laughs> yeah. No, it's just, no, that doesn't sound like a good idea. If I, if I take this and take the slide off of it, why do if I? If you take the slide off of it, then it's just parts, you're right. It's kind of the same having it broke open with it. As yeah, but what if you take the slide off it and it's still got a round in, in the chamber, somehow you manage to put a round in the chamber and have the slide off. Technically that wouldn't work unless you were taking the slide off and they're still around the chamber, then you would shoot yourself. But once the slide's already off. There you go, see, point proven. I, you just proved my point right there. I don't even know what's happening You shoot right yourself. Here. I do not shoot myself when I put my. I mean, I'm just saying, you might no, shoot your I eye out. I make my dad really nervous because I. We saw it on Christmas car uh, Christmas story. Hey, I've seen that movie. Yep. What? Really? I've seen that movie. Yay! We found one that she's seen. <laughs> it's a classic. <laughs> We're all in a group chat the other day that somebody referenced a movie and asked if anybody had seen it, and I was like, "Come on, guys." What was that movie? I don't uh, even. Um, something I don't remember. Oh, Mike, no, no, I, no info on the weird uh, SAS one. Um, I don't know what that was. <laughs> we, we did have to point out that, that PSA. I thought it was pretty funny that they had to send out an email like, hey, if people are trying to return the SAS because it doesn't have any sites, uh, it's designed that way. Like, that was... You're not missing a front site. It's literally in the bullet point of what makes this gun that... cool. It doesn't have a front site. And that was the plan. I uh, can't shoot accurate two inch groups at 50 yards. It's a baby gun. It's a baby You're kind of like <laughs> really planning oh, on baby. like, if I need to use it in a defensive situation, the guy's gonna be like right Poof. there. Like here. Like right here. And if you can't hit the target from this far away, you don't need to be carrying a gun because it's just a liability to all the rest of us standing around watching. Today, Vinny's enjoyment was he got his Glock 48 and went downstairs and shot it at 12 yards with no sights. None. Why? You gotta say rich earmuffs before you do that. Earmuffs! Rich earmuffs. Yeah, Rich is gonna be mad. Yeah, he's gonna be but, mad. I mean, you know? in, in Vinny's defense, he hit it all on that little blue target. It's all right, yeah. little, it's what a 12 inch. Uh, it's like, like a 12 inch circle. Yeah, it's yeah. a 12 inch circle. 12 yards. And I mean, he's a proficient shooter, so. Yeah, he got his gun black nitride and wanted to see if he could shoot it without sights so that when people tell him it's hit their sights on the gun that are the problem, then he can go. This is my no sight target group. And he will. And you know what's funny about it is uh, out of that, it, like his shots weren't all to the left. Nope. They were just kind of. Strange. Block sights are to blame. I still think it's because of the crooked Glock barrels. Like, look, it's if you look at this gun, clearly, if I hold it with my right hand, it's crooked, see? And if you hold it with your left hand, it's crooked. So, clearly, it's not the shooter's fault. It's the guns that are crooked, see? Like, try and shoot that. It's okay. I'm just it's, a, I'm it's just gonna a go a little left and. You know, then when you when you when you tap, because the triggers are really hard to t to pull, so you gotta really. Let me just double check. You really squeeze down to get that sucker. I mean, it takes a little bit of shoulder. This is what I deal with. I'm just the Hoosier that See, then didn't you get like, like this Glock nice 1911. So Chris sharpied out my rear sight. See how that like aims perfect? <laughs> See, and if I go the other <laughs> hand, it comes in perfect. Like. <laughs> I literally... How many times we hear, oh, can you take my sights? It's shooting a little to the left. I will say, I was shooting... left shoot and low? Uh, yeah. I was shooting low left Weird. until you came with a Sharpie and went, let me fix this. Go shoot it now. Yeah, a lot of people find that to be like a humongous help and they like, they're too concentrated with trying to look at the rear sight and the front sight. <laughs> So it's like, okay, we'll just take out the back sight problem because that's just confusing you. Front sight focus. It was Acceptable so funny. I'll never forget the day Chris is like, pulling the thing. I can fix it, let me see it real quick. And he just pulls a sharp out of his backpack and he's like, go shoot it now. And it worked. I didn't have, I didn't have to drop Something's money so on new sights. Something just, so simple. Sharpie. Yeah, just. We have really covered literally nothing on this paper. Yeah, we got all this stuff done. There's another sheet, you forgot that part. 
What? Yeah, that's all the, th it's the same things. So we got some fun, some fun stuff that you don't want to talk about news. So I was trying to push it off for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I don't like talking about politics. They're not my thing. Ah, oh, Beto, <gasps> man, Christmas. he is trying to be the next Obama when it comes to gun control. And how can I get more people to buy the guns that more people are scared of? I just and instead of like informing people, hey, this is not really that scary of a gun. In fact, it shoots kind of a, a terrible round for killing. Um, because ultimately, like, that is the number one reason that the military doesn't want to use that round anymore. If you take any research, yep. you'll find out that the army is actually, the whole military is actively trying to find a replacement round because the 5.56 five, does not do very good at the killing. So please stop using that as a talking <laughs> point. You have like 15 or 18 states, something like that, that don't even allow it for hunting purposes because it's not very good. Say it's now, not considered ethical. There are plenty of calibers that you can get in the AR-15 and AR-10 platforms, platforms that are absolutely excellent. My mute. Mm. I, Do you like your mute? Amazing. It works great. I mean, that I deer just, falls. I can't listen to his voice. Chris, you know, is being Chris and being, you know, a very diligent, educated person and turns on the videos to listen so he can argue accurately. Yeah. Uh, and I've listened to his voice and I'm just like sitting at my desk like this. I mean, listen to this, some of this guy. This, this, so Anderson Cooper asked him, I don't know if anybody tried to go make it through the, the Democrat, whatever Spielio. you call that thing yesterday. Um, so we got the, he says, I, he had, and, blah, blah, blah. Oh, so yeah. Anderson Cooper asked him specifically, hey, you said last time you're going to come take people's AR-15s and AR AK-47s. How do you plan on doing that? And Beto just rolls them dice, puts them right back in his pocket. And he's like, I'm not going to really point that out. So he says, I think just as in any law that it is not followed or flagrantly abused. Yeah, people don't abuse gun laws at all. Um, there have to be consequences or else there's no respect for the law. So, you know, in a case, I think there would be a visit by law enforcement to recover the firearm and make sure that it's purchased or bought back so it cannot be potentially used against somebody else. So you don't have to do anything. He's just going to make them outlawed by rule of law and then everybody's just going to give them back and if you don't give them back you're just going to give them back just going to say i'm doing the math here yeah it ain't going that equation ain't going to work yeah so he just expects people to follow the law which i mean i hate to admit to him that a vast majority of people are going to then go and turn their guns in because they will be illegal at that point if I have to follow gun laws, do, do people who do drugs have to follow the law too? Well, no, in fact, in relation to that line of thinking, he actually, later on in that, actually said that he wants to make opiates just legal. Be yes? But I thought guns causing suicide was a problem, so what about the opiates that Well, the gun that? violence, because like suicides, Suicides are a big thing. Um, it's a big reason there's a, there's a lot of gun violence. I, I don't understand the gun violence part of I it. I understand the, right. the gun deaths and suicide by gun, sadly, is, is a popular method. But like, it's kind of like a, by the act, actual definition, like a, a, a one person show. Um, so, but if so I do it violence. via, like, overdose... William Burke, he we, wants we, you not to break a law if you... Because he wants to give you a safe place to shoot up your heroin and But what if the heroin crack. dealer wants to come rob my house now and I don't have a gun to defend myself? Well, he's not going to do that because that's against the law. It, interesting, and the heroin isn't. Well, that's what he wants. He wants to make the heroin e not illegal. Because we don't have a big heroin epidemic going on right now. I'm trying to follow the logic here. There's none. I'm struggling. There's none. Uh, so he, his only plan then, because so 
Cooper finally came back to him and was like, okay, so you still haven't really said what you're going to do, and you said that you're not going to go door to door, so like, what are you going to do? And he's like, okay, well, if someone does not turn in an AR-15 or an AK-47, uh, then that, and, and if he brings it out into public and brandishes it, then that weapon will be taken from him. And if, if they persist, I don't understand if they persist, persist for what? Because if they bring, bring it out and then you take it, like I don't know what they're persisting. I guess maybe if they're persisting to keep bringing more of them out, I'm not really sure. But he says there's gonna be other consequences. One for every day of the year. Yeah, there'll be some other consequences. I, I'm trying to come up and formulate like an educated, thoughtful response. But I just keep coming back to this. Facts don't matter. Uh, feelings do. Remember that. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know. So, in honor of Beto, no Beto, no. Get you 10% off all ARs on the website. No space Beto, B-E-T-O space no. No Beto, no. Say no Beto. You can't have this, but buy it for a cheaper price. I just can't. I can't wrap my... You're doing the wrong thing. I'm thinking. You, you don't think. You just feel. My, just feelings, feels. my feelings say he wrong. But that would be wrong. Because it says right here... So, but he's that, the criminal. I'm not the one who's had felony charges. Well, I mean... Oh, we're supposed to forget about that's, that. That's what we're. That's the kind of the, the behind the scenes that we think is... We think he just doesn't want anybody else to have a gun because he can't have a gun. Oh, uh, it's a jealousy thing. Yeah. It's like when you're a kid and somebody else I'm going to take my ball and go home. It's Only like, he doesn't have any guns. So he's like, I'm going to take your guns. And it's I'm like when the home. kids, you get the better lunch at school, and they're like, well, I ain't got no gun bears. And then they steal your gun bears and throw them in the trash can. If I can't have no gun bears, you can't have no gun bears. I don't know. My daughter ends up bringing extra snacks, and I'm like, you, you seriously don't eat this much food at home. What are you doing with Maybe them? that's why she, maybe she bribes the other children. Uh, my oldest, uh, my oldest, I used to get calls and be like, can you please only send one lunch with your daughter? I'm like, why? She's hungry. And she's like, well, she's not really eating both sandwiches. She's giving some of the sandwiches to other kids. What are the other kids were hungry? I, it, my daughter was bartering. She's giving her home brought food so that she can go and get food from the lunch line. I'm like, why don't you just say, hey, can you give me lunch money? I mean, kids are weird. Yeah, and sometimes they grow up to be dumb too. Because I don't think this kid gets like anyway. But anyway, I, yeah. I so, can't even discuss just, that topic, and because I, like, usually I'm one for a good like educated debate, but I can't even debate that because I'm just like, huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's this what? row case out in California so that really turning the AR-15 thing up on its head. And, California. Ultimately, for the really long story shortened, this guy was just a dude, um, and he started with making 80% lowers, um, which as you know, or, or may not know, it's the AR-15, the bottom part that holds the trigger components. So far, it's been called the re lower receiver, and that is what's been regulated as being the quote-unquote firearm. So the 80% means you can't put certain components into it. It's mm -hmm. A marketing term there's not really a percentage of doing uh, but nonetheless you have this thing that still needs work so you yes. still need drilling still need grinding and so forth to be able to put parts in to make it into a gun so because it isn't actually a gun at that point it's still 100% legal for anybody to own it yeah. or whatever um, the other downside is then you have these things like people that don't know how to do the things, like drill it out and so forth. So this guy decided that he was going to have build parties. So he had his machine shop, and you would go in, and he would, you would, okay, here's your the, my money, and that's I want that one. And you go, okay, cool, here's your 80. Put it in the machine. Now press this green button. Boop. Beep. So you then, in his mind, were manufacturing it because you pushed the button. And so he sends an email to the ATF and he's like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Is it cool? And the like, ATF's like, LOL, no. 
no, you, no, no, that's no, no, no. Um, and so supposedly he stops. And then a little time goes by and starts up again. This time, it's not just anybody can do it. You had to be a member. So members of his group then were members, and then they could push the green button, and then, so he thought that was okay. This sounds and then the ATF sounds went in and was like, hey, what's up? And he's like, yeah, you, you're totally cool because you bought one before, and this guy, you got to vouch for this guy, and then he's in. I'm, you know, I'm going to charge him the member fee. He's like, okay, cool. He's like, cool, push the green button. The next thing you know, he gets arrested, and he's in prison. So we've been waiting for four years on what's going to happen with this guy. Now, under the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations, a firearm frame or receiver is defined as, quote, that part of a firearm which provides housing for the hammer, bolt, or breech block and firing mechanism, and which is usually threaded at its forward portion to receive the barrel. End quote. The AR does not have that. It has a lower receiver and an upper receiver, and the lower receiver holds parts, the hammer and the trigger part, and the upper holds the bolt and the barrel. And so basically, this guy's attorney was like, hey, This don't fit these words. Dim words uh, don't in, work. In a different legal mumbo jumbo. But basically <laughs> he's saying, hey, the way this reads, the ATF has been utilizing that to say, okay, well, the bottom end of the AR is what holds the firing control group, and so we'll call that the lower. And that's the firearm part, and that's the regulated part. But this guy was like, mm, nah, it doesn't work. So ultimately what it came down to is they went into the court and they were like, here's what our fight is. And the judge was like, whoa, I'm just going to throw this whole thing out because if we go with that, it totally upends. And no matter how we end up going and ruling in this, everything that we have set up right now is going to fall apart. So again, let me remind you, there are people that are trying to figure out the loopholes, and then you have people that are not, are just politicians, they're not gun people, that are writing laws that govern the guns, and then you have the guns that are really smart people that are like, cool, so that says a single action of the trigger. So if I have a pull action and a release action, that's two functions of the trigger, i.e., one function of the trigger, one round fired. If I do two functions per cycle, I get two rounds per cycle, it still is within the law. Why don't we just say, let's do away with that. Let's just, you can have all the things. You can do all the things. Because if they take the AR-15 or if the AR-15 becomes illegal just by definition, then I can imagine that there's probably going to be a whole bunch of guys in backwoods places that are going to be like, well, if I got this AR and it's already illegal, if I just make it full auto, it's going to be just as illegal. <laughs> and you know, at the same and time, you know you're like, you know what? You're not really wrong because it's imagine. 10 years either way. I'm At imagining, least put a rumble switch and that's more fun right away. I'm right? imagining somebody like a straw hat, like. <laughs> Oh, uh, he's not going to have a straw hat. That's going to be a trucker hat. And he's going to be like, listen here, y'all. Here's the way I'm looking at it. <laughs> 10 years is 10 years is 10 years. Let's have a party. Right. No. No. And no, we are not suggesting you do that. No. Not at all. But it's a, it's a funny mental I image. I suggest you just fight against it on the politicians and say, hey, look, there's these certain rights that it says that are unalienable, they were given to us by our creator. You can't touch these, period. These are mine. You these can't. are mine. You can't you touch. You have no troll over them. So it's not like you're taking <laughs> you, away. You will never get this. You will never get this. You will never get this. 
amendment right given to me by the Constitution. The Constitution simply says you can't change it. You say it is good mine. I mean, <laughs> you will never get this. You will never get this. Right. <laughs> neener, neener, neener. <laughs> Thank golly. It's like a small child with candy. So, no Beto, no. Show Beto that we like ARs. We want ARs. <laughs> and get you and save you some money. Are we done? I don't know. I think we are. Anyway, we come see money. us. We have fun stuff. We've got sweet scars. Um, that are made with all the FDE colors. So I think we've got all the colors of the FDE and the black. Uh, it is a SCAR 16, so it's a little 556 five, option, but it's got a sweet Haley light on the, a Haley mount on the front for a surefire light. Uh, you have your sights, you have your sway swift, throw to the side, magnifier, EOTech, I mean, ultimately, it is period correct. Um, and the 16. There we go. So we got those. We've got Glocks. They're super patriotic. Everybody needs a patriotic Glock. I can Vanna White it. Okay? 17 Gen 5. Ooh. All ah. done up fancy. Or maybe you go for something a little more classic. You can go with the Kimber 1911. I like that. There's less colors. It's very nice. I mean, this thing's really smooth. So, come in, check us out. We have all kinds of good, fun stuff. We have Customer Appreciation Day. Bring in your food stuff, bring in yes. your household goods. Get tickets to win one of two guns. Come in Saturday, we've got all kinds of fun stuff going on. Like I said, free lanes, free barbecue. Uh, I think Canine and SWAT K9 might be here SWAT for a while. Canine and SWAT are showing up. Kelly, uh, lined Kelly up being, for us. Yeah, so we'll have all kinds of fun stuff going Chris on. Chris and I will be here. Who knows what's going all, all the All the funds. Sam and I will be here so you can come hang out with us. Um, oh, look at that. I just showed that scar for just a moment, and there goes Brian. I still don't know who excited. you are. He's a, it, it's, if it's a SIG or an FN, I he, still know he who tends he is, to just get so a little excited. So he's still going to be mad at me. I, Romeo Zeros? No, no, no Romeo Zeros yet. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard anything from SIG here lately, so I'm really not sure what's going on. I know that they've been bombarded. I haven't they heard keep from launching Jacob stuff. in a couple weeks. I know that Jacob didn't even know that the SAS was coming out until it got supposedly I'm leaked. I'm sorry. So either it got actually leaked or it was a ploy for them to quote, leak it right before the Hellcat came out. I'm not really sure. I, I see the fumes coming from over there. Uh, speaking of which, Phil, did you know that there are edible crayons out now? They're yeah. tasty. Like, made for eating. I'm sorry, I can't help it. I Phil gets, getting Phil gets really mad when I start to do things like this. He took I my stool. Your he so he awesome. took my stool away earlier. He took your stool. He I tried know, to take I had your to phone. save the sweet he, tea. Yeah, like you know, just if you listen to Phil's rules. I can't sit still. I didn't talk for like a solid thirty seconds. What more do you want from me? That was a long time, wasn't it, guys? Like an absolute unusual opening. That's I what can I'm take this shoe off. And I can beat you with I'm it. I'm going to say it was an unusual opening. And with that, we're going to wrap up for <laughs> these two start killing somebody. And I have a feeling that he may go for her and she's just going to take it out on me. So. No, he comes after me. She, I'm going to leave this building me. faster than anybody's ever seen. I'm leaving. Come see us this weekend. Look at him. Or He's like, what are you that. Doing? Remember, today is Wednesday. That means all you ladies come in, you get a free lane. This weekend, everybody gets free lanes, free barbecue, save money on guns, on optics, on everything else. Uh, if you're not a member, you can actually Ooh, use the 10% off that. for the membership. So use that in conjunction. Save you a bunch of money. Okay. Members get it early, so members come in, buy stuff now before yes. the general public gets to come in and on wipes Saturday. And everything all out. Yes, and I can tell you that there's a couple of here. guns on the rental wall, or on the used gun wall that have been really people paying attention to, so 
come in, make an offer, 10% under what homes. we have it listed for, and I guarantee you'll be able to take it home. They're like puppies. They need good homes. True that. But we're going to go now before Phil harms me. Are you ready? I'm ready for Phil to not kill me. Are you ready? Let's go. We're out.